Hey there, ho there, hi there. It's time for the order. My name's Corey. So today I'd like to talk about incentives in our tabletop role-playing games. And some of you might say, hey, uh, things don't make you act certain ways, especially like in a role-playing game. People just role-play their character. But that is not true. The rules do exert pressures that sometimes make you act in certain ways. And I know what some of you are saying, nothing makes me do anything, I do things by choice. But if it's a choice between something that would benefit you in the game and something that wouldn't benefit you in the game, you'd usually do the thing that benefits you, even if it's against what your character might do normally. You might not even be thinking about it at the time. So I wanna give you a couple examples of incentives in games. Uh, the first one comes from our Fantasy D6 game called Philanthia that we do every Friday. And the other one comes from Legend of the Five Rings and the homebrew rules I introduced on this channel just a month ago. So in Valanthia, I play a character called White Ape. He's an elf. He does earth magic. None of that's really important. What's important is, is he's been with this NPC named Johan, and they've been helping each other for a couple games now. Johan has been infected by demon parasites that are slowly turning him into a demon, and normally he would want to save his life in order to reverse this process. He doesn't know that the process can be reversed, though. In trying to subdue him, Johan becomes mortally wounded. It has one round before he's going to die. My character is the only one with the medical skill that can do it within the time frame. This is what happens next. With the help of the Ellis's light, I will say that you are able to subdue him and leave him kind of like this, like shaky mass but he is definitely gonna die if somebody doesn't administer some medicine within one round i can come forward and do a medicine check because i am the actual person who has the medicine skill oh okay cool yeah and we can actually do it uh, if you bandage his wounds and stabilize him you can save him but you can immediately see that his body is so distorted and weird right now it's going to be harder to stabilize than normal. The, normally it's a 10. Right uh, now I guess I'll spend a freaking uh, character point. On, wait, it's going to be a 10 normally? 10 normally, but you guess that it's harder right now. Uh, there's no way I'm saving them. I have to roll a 6. So, and then I'll have, otherwise I'll spend two character points or more. You know what? It's not worth it. Johan, I love He's you, buddy. He's an NPC. Sorry, man. I love you, gonna but... try it. I pull out my badges. I look at you. I go, nah. And with that, he dies. Now, character points in Fantasy D6 are also your experience points. You can spend your character points or experience points to roll more dice, increasing the effectiveness of whatever you're doing. Now, my character does want to save Johan, but as a player, I feel like my character is not going to have any growth. So I didn't spend those character points. I let Johan die because of a rules mechanic, not because of what my character would do. I gotta say, I thought about this for days after that game. Going back and forth in my head, you let down Johan. All you had to do was spend character points. Who cares? It's just a game. Johan is an NPC. He doesn't exist. You want to have fun in the game. And to do that, you want character growth. What this means to me is that character points being used for both experience points and to increase your roles gives a bad incentive to players. The solution for this is to split those two mechanics. Dungeons and Dragons does this well with inspiration. And in fact, inspiration was inspired by these very rules from the D6 system. Dungeons and Dragons saw the pitfalls with it and adjusted their system. So let's talk about Legend of the Five Rings and my homebrew rules for opportunities. Here they are. And we're going to talk about this last little section here where I talk about banking unused opportunities. I've been running these homebrew rules now for a month in my game. How have they been doing? Uh, what unintended consequences has brought up? And one of these is the incentives from bankable opportunities. What I found is that when people just have the option to throw an opportunity into a bank instead of spending it on something that would help them immediately, they would rather just put it in the bank and forget about it. They don't want to use opportunities for
for the things that opportunities are supposed to be used for. It's making my players a little lazy. So what are a couple ways to fix this? I made bankable opportunities in the first place because players didn't feel that they were getting enough from opportunities that they thought they should have. Sometimes when the situation fits none of the opportunities that are available, you just feel bad that that opportunity is wasted. I wanted to give players that extra option. When nothing else fits, they can always put it in the bank, but it had the opposite reaction. They put it in the bank first and think of everything else they could do with their opportunities as an afterthought. I'm sure there's a lot of different things I could do to shore up these rules. My first thought, of course, is to just get rid of the bankable opportunities. Sure, this means that I'm abandoning the thing that I want it to fix, but I'm not adding new rules. I'm not overcomplicating everything, which is important for game flow. My second idea, and this is with the help of my patrons, thank you patrons for helping me workshop my ideas, is to create a rule called lost opportunities. This means when you put an opportunity in the bank, that opportunity works against you in the short term. If you ever played other games by Fantasy Flight, like Star Wars, you get threat. And when you get threat, bad things happen to you rather than good things with advantage. Here, if you don't use your opportunity, maybe something happens in the opponent's favor. Maybe something stymies you a little bit. I know what you're thinking. Hey, if Lost Opportunity does that, wouldn't it incentivize the, the players to make sure that they spend every single opportunity even if, even if it doesn't fit the situation. Yes and no. You see, when you put opportunities in the bank, once that bank reaches a certain threshold, it turns into a void point or takes away all of your fatigue and strife. So you may be taking a short-term difficulty to get a long-term benefit. I'm sure there are other ways to make these rules better. And I'd love to hear them, put them down in the comments. Tell me if you have any stories of incentives that made a game go strangely for you. Guys, here are my patrons. I love them a lot. Uh, be sure to like this video, subscribe for more of this kind of content, and uh, never stop gaining experience.